In this video, we're going to look at sketching lines and curves. A sketch differs to a plot. So in the past, you might have been asked to plot a graph. Let's take an equation and we'll have a quadratic. Let's have y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. And we might have been asked to plot this graph, the values of x, between negative and positive 3. So let's go ahead and do this. We would now get a table of values. We would take the x value and find the corresponding y value. So let's go ahead and put in x. x is the independent variable, so that's the one I'm choosing. Minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. We would then have a corresponding y coordinate or the dependent variable. So let's quickly work through this. If I square minus 3, I'm going to get 9. Then I'm going to add 6, which gives me 15, and subtract 8. That's going to give me 7. If I put 2 in, that's going to be 4, plus 4, minus 8. That's going to be 0. If I put 1 in, that's going to give me 1. Then we're going to have now plus 2, which is 3, minus 8, which is minus 5. So you can see that I'm having to calculate these as I go along. Uh, if we put 0 in, 0, 0, and then we'll have minus 8. If I now put 1 in, I've got 1 minus 2, which is minus 1, minus 8, which is going to give me minus 9. If I put 2 in, that's going to give me 4, minus 4, minus 8, and we've got now minus 8. When you've done this in the past, you might have uh, been quite relieved at this stage, as we can see now that we're going to have this axis of symmetry. So we're expecting the next one now to be minus 5. So 3 squared is 9, minus 6, and then that's going to give me 3, and then minus 8, so we're going to get now minus 5. Now if I just did 4, let's just do 4, 16 minus 8 minus 8, that's going to give me now 0. So I've just tagged that on, and you can see it's symmetric about this point. Now that's quite time consuming. What we would then have to do, generally on graph or square paper, is go ahead and plot these points. So if we plotted the points, I'll do these now, we would have the first one, which is minus 3, 7. So let's put that just here. We'll have that one just here. So let's say and put it just there, minus 3, 7. If we look to the next one, we're going to have now minus 2. So let's put that there. We've got minus 2, 0. The next one, we've got uh, minus 1, minus 5. So let's put that just there. So minus 1, minus 5. The next one we got 0, comma, minus 8, so we'll put that one there, 0, comma, minus 8. We've got 1, comma, minus 9. We've got 2, comma, minus 8. We've got now 3, comma, and let's put that there, let's put these on. As you can see, I'm just uh, essentially plotting the points, so let's put this on. We've got 3, comma, minus 5, and then we'll have 4, comma, 0, and of course we could evaluate some more points. At this stage now, we would draw a sweeping curve through these points and we'd have a fairly accurate plot of the graph. Okay, so come round. We'd have the minimum point just here and we would come back up and we'd have something now that looks like so. So that's what we've got there. So that now, we could go ahead and label that up. Y is equal to x squared minus 2x and then we'd have now minus 8. We don't want to be doing this all the time. Quite clearly, if you're in an exam, you don't want to do this. You want to have a rough idea of what this graph is going to look like and general points of intersection. And this is where the idea of a sketch comes in. So let's look at the key features of a good sketch. The first thing it should show is the correct shape. So this is a quadratic equation. We know quadratics are parabolas. If I drew a straight line, this wouldn't be acceptable. If I drew, drew some kind of squiggle, let's just draw something like this, that is not a quadratic. We know it's either going to look like so or open up the other way. So a straight line wouldn't be acceptable. We know that this would be some form of y is equal to mx plus c, a straight line. So that's the first thing. We need to get a clear understanding of the shape and represent that fairly. Often we will be asked for the point of intersection of the coordinate axis. The coordinate axis, x and y. So we'd need to show where it crosses the x-axis and where it crosses the y-axis. And shortly we'll look at how to find those points. 
sometimes we will be expected to show the value of the maximum or minimum point. So this right here is going to be the minimum point, or we could say that's the vertex. We also need to make sure that these graphs are clearly labelled. What we're going to do in this video is work through some basic graphs and look at the different types. Some of them it will be straight revision for you, some it will be new learning. So let's start off now with straight lines. Straight lines are generally put in the form either y is equal to mx plus c or ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. This is the one that you're probably more familiar with and the second one will become uh, more widely used when we look at the topic of uh, coordinate geometry. So this particular graph gives us a straight line. M is the gradient and C is the y-intercept or where x is equal to zero. So let's look at some examples of that. So y is equal to 2x plus 1. We've got a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of 1. We could look at another straight line. We might have now y is equal to 3x minus 4. So this time we've got a gradient of 3 and we got a y-intercept of minus 4. We might have y is equal to minus x plus 6. We have a gradient of minus 1 and a y-intercept of 6. Now, these won't always be written in exactly the form y is equal to mx plus c. So we might have y is equal to 4 plus 2x. And of course, you could rewrite this as y is equal to 2x plus 4. So gradient of 2, y-intercept of 4. y is equal to 6 minus 3x. We could write this now as y is equal to minus 3x plus 6. So we'd have a gradient of minus 3 and a y-intercept of positive 6. So let's go ahead and look roughly at what these would uh, look like. So if I was asked now to put these on now a coordinate axis, I want some idea. So if we look at 2x plus 1, we're going to have a gradient of 2. So we'll put it like so. And we're going to cross now the y-axis at the point now 1. So we're going to have 0, 1. So let's just straighten that up like so. So we can show a gradient of 2. Now it doesn't matter quite yet because um, I've just put, I've decided that this is what it's going to look like. Um, but when we start putting other ones on, we need to show some difference between these gradients. So y is equal to 2x plus 1. So if we consider this point right here, this is where x is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, y will be equal to 1. So this will be 0, 1, which we need to label up. Now, this is the x-axis, and we consider it's going to cross the x-axis when y is equal to 0. So we'd have 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. 2x is equal to minus 1, divide by 2. So we'd have now this point right here, we'd have now minus 1 half, 0. Now, if I was asked to draw this particular line on the same set of coordinate axes, if I went ahead and did, for example, this, that's clearly incorrect, as we got a steeper gradient. So let's go ahead and get some idea. So this is going to cut now the y-axis at this point right here, and that's going to be minus 4, and we've got now a gradient of 3. So I could do something like that. Now, that's not hugely accurate, but at least it gives us some idea. So what we could do is put this on. The first thing that we need to show is that this has clearly got a steeper gradient, and we'd need to label that up. So y is equal to 3x minus 4, and then this point right here, this is where now y is going to be equal to 0. So we would add 4 to both sides and divide by 3. So this is going to be 4 over 3, comma, 0. So that's 4 over 3, comma, 0. And this point now, not really massively accurate, but we could say that is when x is going to be equal to 0. So y would be minus 4. So x is 0, y is equal to minus 4. And we've got some rough appreciation. As you can see, it's not hugely accurate, um, but it now gives us some idea. And of course, we could find this point of intersection by setting these to equal. And if it said show the point of intersection, all we'd say then if y is equal to 3x minus 4, so 3x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 1. Uh, subtracting now the 2x on both sides, we'd have x minus 4 is equal to 1. Adding the 4 to both sides, x is going to be equal to 5. 
and then we're going to have now the point suddenly into either one of these y would be equal to two lots of five plus one we'd have 11 so if we wanted we don't need to but we could put that point on there at 5 11 and as you can see it's not massively accurate but it gives us some idea if we needed to then put this one on we've got a gradient of minus one and we've got a y-intercept of six so let's go ahead and put that so let's just put it here now with this i can't show that it's something like that because that is quite clearly steeper than the others so what we need to show is that it's going to be a flatter generally speaking a flatter line than the other two it's got a gradient now of minus one so showing something like this and of course we could go ahead and find those now in terms of the x and uh, the x and the y axis generally speaking if this now let's just put that right so if we've got now uh, the a, a gradient of, of one, minus one here this distance would be the same but that just gives us some idea so if we look at examples of straight line graphs I've put some on here we've got y is equal to px plus q p is the gradient q is the uh, the, the y intercept so let's just put this back onto zero so at the moment now I've got y is equal to and let's put this here y is equal to x so that goes through the origin so you can see as I increase the gradient that line gets steeper and steeper and steeper as I take the gradient negative it goes the other way and gets steeper and steeper so if we just have y is equal to x let's put y is equal to x and then I add now, let's go up and up and up with that. We can see now that adding the constant, so that's y is equal to x plus 8, y is equal to x plus 7, and so on and so forth. And we can go down and down and down like so. So that's just a straight line equation in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Now, this second form is slightly different. Uh, and again, you could rearrange to put it in the form y is equal to mx plus c, but there's an alternative way to look at it. So let's look now, let's say we've got 2x plus 3y plus 6 is equal to 0. So this is of the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. And a nice way to think about this is now what would happen if x was naught or y was naught? So let's think about this now. When x is equal to naught, it's going to cross the y-axis. So let's write this here. When x is equal to naught, we're going to have 3y plus 6 is equal to 0. So essentially, this is eliminated. So subtracting 6, dividing by 2, y would be equal to minus 2. So I could place this point right here. So what we're going to have then is the point just here, 0, comma, minus 2. If we consider now when y is equal to 0, I've got 2x plus 6 is equal to 0. So 2x plus 6 is equal to 0. So subtracting the 6 and dividing by 2, x would be equal to minus 3. So we're going to have this point just here, and that's minus 3, comma 0. And all I'd need to do at this stage is draw a straight line through them. So let's do that. And it looks something like so. And we could, of course, go ahead and label that up. So this would be now 2x. So 2x plus 3y plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, you might have wanted to rearrange this. And the benefit of rearranging it into the form y is equal to mx plus c is it's quite easy to find the gradient, or at least if you've got a few different lines, evaluate the gradient of each. So let's rearrange this. We would have 3y is equal to minus 2x minus 6. So I want this in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So I've got 3y, I've subtracted 6 and subtracted 2x from both sides. Dividing through by the 3, we've got minus 2 over 3x, minus 2. And that would give us the line. So we've got a gradient of minus 2 thirds, and we've got now a, uh, a y-intercept of minus 2. Remember, the gradient m is just the change in y. So we've got change in y over the change in x. So the change in x. Uh, and we'll just put that there, or the rise over the run, or dy over dx. So they are just straight line equations, and that would be sufficient in terms of our sketch of that particular equation. Okay, so they are linear equations. The reason they're linear is that our unknown, the highest power, is just 1. So y is equal to x to the power of 1 plus 3. y is equal to 2x plus 6. What we're now going to do is look at quadratic equations. 
Quadratics are written in the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c are just constants and a is not equal to zero. Now, if a was equal to zero, we'd just have bx plus c, which is a straight line. These are called parabolas. If we have now a greater than zero, so we have a positive x squared, we end up with the parabola opening upwards. So this is what we have. So this is a positive quadratic curve. With this particular one, we can see now that we're coming down to the bottom and then up. At this point right here, we've got a negative gradient, got negative gradient, negative, 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 zero, and it's flat at the bottom of the minimum point, and then we come back up and it's got a positive gradient. So that is now the form. So we'd say that this is a minimum point, or we could just say it's the vertex. If A is less than zero, that is, we have a negative quadratic, we open up the other way. So we have a positive gradient, a positive gradient, positive gradient, zero, and this becomes our maximum, and then we have negative, 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 and so on and so forth. So this gives us a rough idea. So an example of this one, we might have now uh, x squared minus x minus 6. This one, we might have minus x squared plus 2x minus 8. So these are just examples now of the quadratics. When we're sketching these, we need to appreciate their parabolas, and they will have now what we call an axis of symmetry that is parallel to the y-axis. So we'll have now an axis of symmetry like so, and an axis of symmetry like so. Now in terms of your uh, sketching, as you can see, the top one is slightly more symmetric than the bottom one. It doesn't, you don't have to be Picasso when you're doing this, you just have to have some rough idea. So let's take an example of a quadratic equation. Y is equal to, and we can have this one, Y is equal to X squared minus X minus six. So that is a quadratic. The one we looked at at the beginning when we plotted, let's have a look at our plot. We had a look at y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. And we could look at that one as well. So let's go ahead, let's uh, do that one. We'll have y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. So the first thing you're saying to yourself now is that this is a positive quadratic. With a sketch of a quadratic, generally speaking, we need the correct shape, we need the x and the y intercepts. Sometimes you'll be asked to state the maximum or minimum point. So let's go ahead now and draw a quick sketch. So how can I do this? Well, what we want to do is consider when it's going to cross the x-axis. It's going to cross the x-axis when y is equal to zero. So y is equal to zero. So we can have zero. Now I can factor this and I'm going to have x minus four and then I'm going to have x plus two. So if we solve this quadratic and remember the solutions or the roots to a quadratic equation is where it crosses the x-axis, we can see that x will be equal to four or x will be equal to minus two. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on here now this point and I'm going to say that this is minus 2 comma 0 and then give this point right here which is going to be 4 comma 0. I haven't got a ruler out with that particular graph. I've not made it look crazily brilliant. It's not fantastic. It just gives us some idea. So where is this going to cross the y-axis? Well, that's when x is going to be equal to 0. So we can see that y will be equal to 0 plus 0 minus 8. So let's just go ahead and extend this. Uh, we certainly don't need to, but it'll just make it look slightly more accurate. And then we can have this point down here. And this is going to now be the point 0, and we'll have 0, comma, minus 8. So at this stage, all I'm going to do now is draw a parabola. So this now is going to be a positive quadratic. We will come round like so, and then we'll come back through, and then back up through this point right here, and it will look something like that. We've already labelled it just here, and we've got now a sketch. These are the important features. Correct shape, 
the y intercepts and the x intercepts. Now, if we did want this point right here, the minimum point, that's going to be what we call the vertex, okay? And in our video on completing the square, we looked at finding that. So if we take now x squared minus 2x minus 8, completing the square, we take half the coefficient, so it's x minus 1, all squared. We subtract away the 1 and subtract away the 8. So in completed square form, I've got x minus 1 all squared minus 9. So if we look at this now, we move 1 to the right and then 9 down. So that will be positive 1 and then we'll have minus 9. Don't need the positive there. So this now gives me the coordinates of this minimum point. Often you won't be asked for that, but if you're asked to show it, simply complete the square. As you go on with your work, you might use differentiation to find that point. So this is a minimum point, and we've got 1, comma, minus 9. And we saw that now from our table earlier. So that's a quadratic. So all we've done is gone ahead, plotted it. Uh, let's look at doing another one. Let's say we've got now y is equal to x squared. Then we have now minus 2x minus 5. So again, we've got a positive quadratic. This one doesn't look like it's going to factor. So we're going to go ahead and complete the square. So y is equal to x minus 1 all squared. And then we're going to have minus 1 minus 5. That's going to give me minus 6. So that's in completed square form. So let's consider a rough sketch. So what we're going to have then is the following. We want to find out where it's going to cross the x-axis. That's where it's equal to uh, y is equal to naught. And where it's going to cross the y-axis, that's where x is equal to naught. So we can say now when y is equal to 0, we've got 0 is equal to x minus 1 all squared minus 6. So we could say at this stage, x minus 1 all squared is equal to 6 by adding 6 to both sides. Taking the square root of both sides, x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. So x will be equal to 1 plus or minus root 6. This is an exact solution, or these are exact solutions. Now, the root of 6, if you think about it, is going to be roughly 2.5, give or take. Um, 2.5 squared is 6.25, so let's just get some feel of this. So what we're going to have then is the fine. I'm going to put 1 plus root 6, and then I'm going to have here 1 minus root 6. I'm not writing decimal answers. I'm writing these as exact solutions. Exact means I'm leaving that third value in. So they are my now y uh, when y is equal to 0, so where it's crossing the x-axis. So let's look at when x is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, y is going to be, and if we just go up here, 0 plus 0 minus 5. So we're going to have y is equal to minus 5. So let's put that just there. Okay, so that will be 0, comma, minus 5. So all I need to do now is just draw through these points right here. And we'll have something that looks give or take. Let's draw there. Uh, I'm just going off the tablet as I do this, hence why we're getting a strange shape. And then it'll look something like that. So that's done. And we can go ahead and label this up. And that is the rough shape. Y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 5. Now, if I wanted to, I could show my axis of symmetry. And in completed square form, we can see that that is going to be the line x is equal to 1. And we've looked at this doing completed square form. So this point right here is going to be now 1, comma, minus 6. That's going to be here. And this will be the line x is equal to 1. So that's a nice sketch. Generally speaking, though, you would just need the points of intersection unless asked otherwise. OK, let's do another one. Let's do another quadratic. Let's, take, uh, let's go for y is equal to, and I'm going to write this, uh, let's go for, let's go for 8, and then we'll have minus x squared, and let's go for plus 2x. Now, at this stage, this looks a bit, uh, a bit alien. So what I want to do is just rewrite it in the form y is equal to ax squared, so we're going to have minus x squared plus bx plus 2x, and then we're going to have now plus 8. 
Now you can factor this if you like. Uh, what are we going to have? We've got a minus x squared term. So we've got 8, we've got 2, so we're going to have now 4 minus x, and then we're going to have, uh, what's that going to be, 2 plus x. So let's see what we end up with now. We're going to have 8, we're going to have plus 4x minus 2x, and then we're going to have minus x squared. An alternative would be to factor out the minus and then consider now just simply factoring. This is a less, um, a less well used way. Let's put that in uh, minus 2x and then we're going to have now minus 8 and then we'd have now minus and we could factor this to x minus 4 and then we would have now x and that's going to be x plus 2. So if we look at that, we're going to get x squared, we're going to get plus 2x minus now uh, the 4x, and then we're going to get minus 8, and of course with a negative. I prefer to see it written like so. So let's consider now what we're going to have, and I'll go through this one a bit quicker. We're going to have a negative parabola. So let's look at this stage right here. We want to know where it's crossing the x-axis. So it crosses the x-axis when y is equal to naught. So either 4 minus x is equal to 0, which is going to give me this point just here, 4 comma 0, or when x plus 2 is equal to 0, so this point right here of minus 2, 0. Where is it going to cross the y-axis? Well, that's when x is 0. So y would be equal to 8 plus 0 plus 0. That's going to be now this point right here. And again, you might want to draw it further up here and be a little more accurate. That's if, of course, you have the same scale for your x and y axis. So what we've got this time, let's go ahead and draw that, we'll come round. So this parabola is opening up now downwards. So we'll come round and it'll look something like that. Okay, hopefully you can work out the, uh, the axis of symmetry from there. But of course, if you wanted, you could go ahead and then complete the square. As you can see, though, if we drop it down, we're going to have this point right here. The axis of symmetry is going to be the line x is equal to 1. Um, so that, that gives us some idea of what that quadratic should look like. Now, if we look at the general quadratic uh, in the form, and we'll just take off the, the linear right here, we've got y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can see now, let's uh, increase this and we'll put the graph on. So this now is uh, our graph, y is equal to, let's do it as x squared. So we can see as we're increasing the value of a, we're getting tighter and tighter to the y axis. So it's becoming steeper and steeper. As I open it up, it gets now flatter and flatter. And if I gradually come this way. Now, when we're back down at zero, quite clearly we don't have now the, the quadratic. We just have this uh, essentially flat line. Then when I go negative, we can see as it gets more and more negative, it's coming now to the x, uh, the y-axis really quite quickly. So let's look at the one we just did. We did, uh, let's go for, it was x squared. We'll do the positive one. It was x squared, and then we had minus 2x, and we had now uh, minus 8. So let's put that like so. And that's what we had. We had a pointer intersection of 2 and 4, and this is what it looked like. So that's plotting it for us, but again, all we need is a rough sketch. So examples of uh, just sketching up quadratic equations. Okay, let's now move on to cubic graphs. So when we're talking about cubic graphs, generally these are written in the form y is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So when we looked at a linear equation, it was of the form y is equal to mx plus c or ax plus b. The power on the x term was just 1. When we looked at a quadratic, it was now x squared. When we're looking at a cubic, we're looking at the third power. Now, let's just start off with a basic bog standard look of y, uh, y is equal to x cubed. So y is equal to x cubed. So if we take it now to the right of the origin, we're going to end up with something looking like this. So we're going to have now the value of y getting incredibly big just here as we increase. So if we think about 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27. So you can see that it's going to be growing quicker and quicker than the x squared term. Now with a positive cubic equation, this is positive. This is just simply y is equal to x cubed. If you have a positive cubic equation, it starts from the 
uh, the third quadrant and leaves from the first. So this is the first quadrant, this is the second, this is the third, and this is the fourth. So a positive cubic will come up through the third and out through the first. Obviously with a negative, a negative will go the other way. So let's just change the colour over and we will go now for a negative. So this is y is equal to minus x cubed. And of course it will be symmetric uh, to this one right here. Let's try and make it look roughly symmetric. And if it's negative, so the coefficient of a is negative, what we're going to have then is it come from the second. So it comes in from the second and out through the fourth. Now, with a cubic equation, we've got a maximum of three distinct real roots. So, let's look at some examples here. If we take y is equal to x cubed, we've got this one single repeated root now of x is equal to zero. We might have a, a two different scenarios. Generally, a cubic equation will look something like this. So, we'll come round, we'll come back up, and we'll have something like so. So the solutions will look something like that. Now that's not always the case. We've got a maximum of three real solutions. So we've got x and y. If we look at another scenario, we might have, and we'll draw it on the same one, we might have a repeated root. So for example, now we might have something that looks like this. So there's one root there. It'll come round and it will touch now the x-axis and then come up. So before when you've seen, for example, x minus 5 all squared, we've got a repeated root of 5. So in this particular case, we would have now a repeated root. We might only have one real root. So for example, now let's have a look at a different one. Let's go with this one. We might have something that looks like this. So we might come up, we might turn around and do that. So we've got now one real root. And as we go through, we will look at different examples of this. So let's look at a typical cubic equation. Now, initially, your work isn't going to be too hard with these. You'll be given them in factored form. So let's say we've got now y is equal to x minus 2. Then we've got x plus 3. And we've got now x minus 1. Straight off, I can tell that this is going to be a positive cubic equation equation. The reason being is the only terms that are going to give me that in x cubed is if I multiply the x by the x to get x squared and x cubed. All of those are positive. If we look at this, we've got now three distinct real roots. So we know from our last bit of graphing that where this crosses the x-axis is now are the solutions or the roots to this equation. So if we set y to be equal to naught, that's where it's crossing now the x-axis. So we'd have now x minus 2 is equal to 0, which is going to give me this one. And I'll put this one just here. That's going to be 2 comma 0. x plus 3 is equal to 0. Well, that's going to give me minus 3 comma 0. And then we've got x minus 1 would be 0. That's going to be 1 comma 0. We know it's positive, so we're going to start from the third quadrant. And all we're going to do is draw a sweeping curve. We're going to come up. We'll come round to a maximum point. We will come through, turn round, and then at a minimum point, come back through, and then continue this like so. Now, with this particular equation, as x gets big, and we say as x tends to positive infinity, y also now tends to positive infinity. So as x gets big, y gets big. And that gives us now what we would have as a positive cubic equation. Now, when x tends to, or gets now, very large and negative, y also gets very large and very negative. And we can see that here. So the further we go this way, the bigger we make the negative x value, the more negative this is going to get. So this gives us some idea of what this looks like. Now, have we fully labelled this up? Well, the answer is no, because we don't have this point of intersection right here. And that is where x is going to be equal to 0. Now, if x is equal to 0, y is going to be minus 2 multiplied by positive 3 multiplied by minus 1. We've got two negatives, which makes it positive and a positive. So 2 times 3 times 1, this is going to give me 0, 6. So that is now done. If we wanted, at some point later in our studies, we could say that this was going to be, I mean, that's not very good, that's going to be a local maximum, 
this is going to be now a local minimum and we can see at this stage right here the gradient is going to be positive generally speaking unless we find some quirkiness then it would be now negative this side negative 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 zero and then positive 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 we wouldn't be asked for that in general all we'd be expected to do was go ahead and sketch this so we got three distinct real roots for x. x is 2, x is minus 3, and x is 1. And that gives us some idea of what the graph should look like. Okay, let's do another one. Let's say we've got now y is equal to, and we'll go, uh, let's do x cubed. Uh, let's go for plus uh, x squared minus 6x. Now, these often um, cause major problems uh, with students because we're yet to look at factoring cubic equations. But if we just consider this has a common factor now of x, so y is equal to x, then we'll have x squared plus x minus 6. So we've taken x out, now we've got a quadratic, and that looks like it'll factor. So we've got x, then we'll have x plus 3, and then we'll have x minus 2. So we can see when y is equal to 0, x will either be equal to 0, or x will be equal to minus 3, or x will be equal to positive 2. So again, we've got three distinct real roots. It's a positive cubic, so we're going to enter from the third quadrant and leave from the first. So let's plot these. So now if we put this one on, this is going to be minus 3. So minus 3 naught. We've got the origin, 0, 0, and then we've got the point 2, comma, naught. Now, this one helps us out a bit because when we're finding, obviously, the, the y-intercept, it's going to be naught, um, as you can see from here. So, quick sketch. doesn't have to be, uh, as stated earlier, you don't have to turn into some kind of artist. It'll look something like so. Okay, and we can label that up. y is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 6x, and that is done. So, some idea, roughly what it looks like. And again, if you're unsure, if you go ahead and put now x equal to 0, you can see at this stage, y is going to be equal to 0 plus 0 plus 0. And all I've done is put it in here. Now, you might say, why is it not minus 0? Well, plus 0 and minus 0 are essentially the same thing. Um, and we can see that that goes through there. So, that's all we would need. General shape, points of intersection, and that now is a good sketch of this particular equation. Let's now look at another cubic equation. Let's say we've got now 4, uh, what should we go for? Let's go for 4 minus x. Uh, let's go for x plus 5. And let's go for 3 plus x. Now, if I look at this here, I should automatically spot that this is going to be a negative cubic equation. If we consider, if I multiply these two, we're going to get a term in positive x squared. Then, as soon as I multiply it by this one, I'm going to get negative x cubed. If I had another negative here, then I'd end up with positive. If I had three negatives, I'd get back a negative. So just look at that and think to yourself, well, is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative? And that's one of the ways that you can establish. Don't go ahead and expand it all out, as it's going to be a complete mess. So let's consider what we want then. We want the points of intersection now with the x-coordinate axis. So points of intersection are going to be here now where y is equal to naught. So we've got naught is going to be equal to 4 minus x multiplied by x plus 5 multiplied by x plus 3. So we're going to have now positive 4. If 4 minus x is naught, we've got now positive 4, which I'm going to put just here. So 4 naught. Okay, if this one is going to be equal to naught, then that's going to give me minus 5. And I haven't got a ruler out, I haven't measured this distance, it just gives us some idea. And then the next one, x plus 3, that's going to give me now minus 3 naught. So, this is a negative cubic equation. With a negative cubic equation, we start from the second quadrant and leave through the fourth. So, let's see what this is going to look like. So, it's going to come through here. We will turn round to a minimum point, we'll come back round, and then we consider that we're going to go through the y-axis there, we'll turn round, and then it'll come back through and leave through that point. Ideally, it'll look a bit nicer than that, but that gives us some idea. So, how do we find this point right here? Well, that's where x is going to be equal to 0. So, we'd have y is going to be equal to 4, 
and then we're going to have now 5, and then we're going to have 3. Now, 4 times 5 times 3 is 60, so this would be the point 0, 60. And quite clearly, that's not, uh, that's not going to be in scale, but it now gives us some rough idea of now where that point is going to be. Uh, 4 times by 5 is 20 times by 3, and that's where we have that point. So that's a, a nice, nice sketch of that. Now, with the, uh, the negative cubic, as x, so as x, let's write this here, as x gets very large, so as x tends to positive infinity, so along here, y is going to tend to negative infinity. This is going to get incredibly uh, large negative, so as we go this way. And we can say as x now tends to negative infinity, that is now, we go this way, we can say that y is going to tend to positive infinity. So it's just the opposite of the, uh, the, the positive one that we looked at earlier. So that's a good sketch. I mean, I say it's a good sketch. We just have to give some idea of where this point is going to, to be. And that's where x is not 4 times by 5 times by 3. They're all positive values, and we can see clearly from the sketch. So again, three distinct real roots to our equation. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's say we've got now another cubic. Y is equal to x minus 2. And then we've got now x minus 4, all squared. This is a cubic equation. If I expand that second bracket, that's going to give me a term in x squared. And then we're going to multiply through by a linear factor of x minus 2, which will give us a cubic. This gives us an example of what we call a repeated root. It's a positive cubic equation. You can see clearly I'm going to get a positive x squared. I'm going to get a positive um, x, squared, uh, x squared multiplied by x, and that will give me now a positive. This is a repeated root. So if we set now y equal to naught, what we've got then is 2 and we've got 4. We need to be a bit careful here. We know that we're going to come up, and we'll come up like so. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll come through here. So we'll start here. We will come through at 2. We will turn round, and we will touch at the repeated root, and then go back through. So this point right here is 2, 0. This point is 4, 0. Now, why are we touching? Well, let's, have a, let's go back and look now at a quadratic equation. If we had a quadratic equation, let's say we had now y is equal to x minus 5 all squared. We had now a repeated root of 5, and we just touch the x-axis. So the discriminant b squared minus 4ac was equal to naught, and we put this point on like so. That's what we've got here. We've got a repeated linear root. So we could say now the solutions to this equation, we've got two real uh, solutions. We've got now x is equal to 2, and then we've got x is equal to 4, and 4 is the repeated one. Now, if this had been the other way round, and I would have had now at the point, let's just sketch this up. If I'd had now the scenario where I had x minus 2 all squared and x minus 4, so let's look at how these differ. x minus 2 all squared x minus 4. We would have had the same root, but we would have had the repeated root at 2. So this one would have touched at 2, come round, and then out at 4. So this would be the point 2, 0, 4, 0. So just be aware, um, we've got a maximum of three distinct real roots, and in this particular case, we've got one repeated, so we've got two distinct real roots. Now, how do we work out uh, this point right here, which we need to show? Well, that's when x is going to be equal to naught. So y is going to be equal to minus 2. And just be careful. What we've got now is minus 4, which we're going to square. So we've got now minus 2 multiplied by positive 16. Um, a, a kind of a, a, an error that often comes up is students put that's going to be positive 8. Or they end up uh, doing something crazy here and saying that it's going to be minus something or other. We've got this. All I'm doing is squaring this. We know that it should be a negative value, and that's going to be 0, minus 32. So repeated root in that particular equation, 
and that is what the graph should look like. And again, with this one, we'd have exactly the same here. We'd have now on here uh, the case where y uh, is going to be equal to, certainly in x is naught, we've got minus 2, which we need to square, and then we've got then the minus 4. So if we did this, let's go ahead, we put exactly the same 0 in here. That's going to give me 4, and then we can have minus 4. So this point, this time, is going to be 0, comma, minus 16. So all I've done is now subbed in those values. So they're typical examples of cubic equations. And as we work through, we will look at some more challenging examples. So let's just spend some time seeing what these look like when they're plotted. So what I'm going to do now is just look at these and go ahead and plot them. So on the screen, I've got y is equal to x plus d, x plus f, and x plus g. These are just values that we can we can alter. So I've just put in now the values. So let's put in d. D is going to be our first one. And let's put in now 1. And then we'll put in 1. So let's put this on. And then we're going to, let's have g. It doesn't really matter which order these are in. These are just now what we call linear factors. Let's put g now to be on here. Let's uh, let's put it to be uh, minus 4, so let's put that there, and let's put f now to be, let's go for minus 2. Now, we can see by altering these values now on here, and we'll just zoom in a little, we can see for this particular equation, we've got now on here, uh, we've got x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 multiplied by x minus uh, for so x minus one, uh, x plus one, x minus one, x minus two. So we can see this root, and that's going to be at minus one. We can see this root at two, and we can see this root at four. This gives us some idea, positive cubic equation. Out now, coming up through the third and out through the first, and we could find this point by simply going ahead and multiplying the values. And as you can see from there, that's going to end up giving us eight. And we can see that's for multiple of those three numbers. So that's a positive cubic. Uh, let's look at a negative cubic. So I can see at this stage we've got a negative. So if I put now this, let's put this as three, and we'll just turn this one on. Let's put this one as positive one, and then let's put this one as minus two. What we have here is now our cubic equation. It's negative as I've got the negative in there. Of course, if I switch this over to a positive, let's just put in here, uh, let's put plus, we'll see that now change to a positive cubic equation. The fact that I had a negative in there will end up making it negative. Yet at the same time, if I made one of these negative, we'd end up with a positive. So we can see again, we got three distinct real roots. We've got one here at minus one, which corresponds to that one, one at two, and then one at three. Now, if I put this on and put this one, let's put that to minus two as well. We can see at this stage we have, and we'll just zoom in right here, we've got a repeated root at now x is equal to two, and then we've got our other root at three. So that's what now a cubic equation is going to generally look like. Okay, so they're cubics. Let's now move on to reciprocal graphs to finish with. Generally, the form of a reciprocal graph is y is equal to a over x, where a is a constant. So let's look at the most uh, straightforward one, and that's y is equal to 1 over x. So let's consider what we've got. Now, when we've got y is equal to 1 over x, this is what it will be. So we'll have now y is equal to 1 over x. The shape will look roughly something like so. So we'll come round and we'll do something like that. We'll come round this way now and do something like that. And that's just a quick sketch, nothing massively accurate. So if we consider now 1, 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 2 is going to give us half, 1 over 3 is a third, 1 over 4. And we can see now as x, so we can say as x gets very large, it tends to pass infinity. So as it gets bigger, y is going to tend to 0. So if I did, for example, now 1 over, let's put in here 1 million, that is going to be incredibly small. And remember, as x gets bigger, that's going to get smaller and smaller. Exactly the same this side. As x, uh, so let's write this in, as x tends to negative infinity, so as x tends to uh, negative infinity, y, again, tends to 0. It's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, let's look at what's happening here. We can see that we've got now, uh, this is getting steeper and steeper. So if we do 1 divided by 1, that's going to give us 1. 
1 divided by 1 tenth, or 0 0.1, is going to give us 10. 1 divided by 1 one hundredth is going to give us 100. So as we are now getting closer, as x tends to 0, y is tending to positive infinity. So this is getting incredibly, incredibly quick, incredibly uh, fast. Now we need to appreciate one really, really important thing with this graph. This is now an asymptote. The x-axis is an asymptote and the y-axis is an asymptote. Now what does this mean? Well, if we consider now the following statement, let's take x to be equal to 0. We would have y is equal to 1 over 0. This is undefined. So that's why we use an asymptote. We can't do 1 divided by 0. It's undefined. That's saying how many noughts can go into 1. It makes no real sense. And that's why we have an asymptote. So it can never now, we can never take the value of 0. So this is said to be discontinuous at x is equal to 0. We can't evaluate that. And at the same time, we've got this asymptote here. It can never, ever be equal to 0. So if we have now y, y can never be equal to 0. If we have 1 over, and just insert as many as you like, as many as you like, this still gives us now a, a value. And I can keep going. It will still always be greater than 0. So it's never equal to zero, and that's what gives us these asymptotes. So we have the x-axis and the y-axis as asymptotes. This value of a just puts a scale factor stretch on. And when we look now at particular, um, particular uh, uh, graphs and uh, transformations, we'll look at how a changes. But essentially, this is what we have. This is a reciprocal graph, and we can see clearly some of the uh, particular features. So if I just grab one of those, uh, let's see if we got this one. So I've just put this now, and we'll just clear the cubic one. I put this as y is equal to t over x. t is just some constant. I can't use a because I've already used a before. So let's look at what this will be. Let's and uh, on this one we won't see the asymptote. Now, if I put on here one over x, and we put that on, this is what. So let's scroll out. So we can see now one over x. This is what it looks like. One one. We've got now two one half. We've got now four one quarter and so on and so forth. So do be aware and get used to sketching your graphs and appreciating them as an asymptote. Because if we make any transformations or translations to this particular graph, we're going to need to alter where the asymptote goes. So that's one over x. If we look at two over x, we can see now that that's going to alter, and we can see this point now becomes two comma one. And then we can increase this, and you can see now that it's gradually moving further and further away. We could, of course, make this negative, which looks quite nice, and then exactly the same. And we'll look at the transformations as we go. So that now is what we call a reciprocal graph. OK, now let's put a couple of these things together and consider now some uh, typical questions that we might be asked. We might be asked now to state how many solutions there are to now a certain equation. Or we might be asked now, for example, to say how many uh, solutions are there to the following equation? 1 over x is equal to, uh, let's go for x squared minus x minus 6. So how many solutions are there to this equation? So what we could do is the following. Let's have a look at this. We could draw two different graphs. So we now know that 1 over x is going to look give or take like that. And I mean, that's not brilliant. That loops up a bit unnecessarily. And look something like that. So this should be a bit flatter just here. So that's this curve. So what I'm doing is drawing y is equal to 1 over x. And now I'm going to draw y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6, which is x minus 3, and then x plus 2. So I know that I've got a point of intersection just here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to have 1 just here at minus 2, and I'm going to have 1 at 3 just here. So we end up now drawing the quadratic. And if we consider the quadratic, we end up now with something that looks like this. So what we can say from this, let's draw through here, we can state now the number of solutions to this equation. Now, we wouldn't be expected necessarily to find them, but it gives us some idea that we can have a point just here, so a point just here, a point just here, 
and a point is here. And of course, if you wanted, you could at this stage multiply through the equation by x and look at solving it. Another example might be state uh, how many solutions there are to a different graph. You might have now uh, 2 over x is equal to, let's say, x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. So again, you could plot now the reciprocal of a cubic and consider how many points of intersection you've got just there. We will look at, at this in more detail as we go. The idea of this video though is just to get you used to graph sketching, looking at some of the key features and just being able to replicate these fairly quickly and move through them. So in the next video, we will look at graph transformations and then take our work on from there.